Born in Athens in 444 BC, Xenophon was a follower of Socrates who became a soldier, historian, and philosopher. This man of action is best known for his writings on military history and life in ancient Greece and preserving the sayings of Socrates. After his early years studying with Socrates, Xenophon joined a mercenary force of Greeks that journeyed to Persia to assist Cyrus in his rebellion to overthrow his own brother, the Persian king Artaxerxes II. When Cyrus was slain, along with the five Greek generals leading the mercenary force, Xenophon stepped forward to lead the 10,000 Greek soldiers in an epic fighting withdrawal through the heart of the Persian Empire, through Armenia, and along the Black Sea coast. Xenophon documented this amazing military achievement in a work titled Anabasis, the expedition, which was later used as a field guide by Alexander the Great during his conquest of Persia. To this day, Xenophon's treatise remains recommended reading for young military officers. After this early period as a soldier of fortune, Xenophon returned to Greece with wealth acquired during his conquests and the prestige of a victorious military leader. However, his celebrity among the Athenians faded when he sided with the Spartans in one of the many wars between the competing Greek city-states. The fact that he had previously been a supporter of Socrates, whom the Athenians condemned to death, and had also taken service with Cyrus the Persian during his early military career, may have also been factors in his slide from favor. At any rate, he was banished from Athens and settled at Scylus, near Olympia, where he wrote most of his works. Near the end of his life, his exile from Athens was rescinded. Historians disagree on whether he returned to Athens or lived in Corinth for his remaining years. Edgar Cayce gave numerous readings for individuals said to have played a role in this fascinating Grecian historical drama, which is also a wonderful example of how soul patterns intertwine throughout the ages. The primary character, Xenophon, was identified as Hiram Salter, the uncle of Edgar's wife, Gertrude. In a 1925 reading given for Mr. Salter, Casey noted that in addition to his military achievements as an often, he was a social innovator who led his people to a higher understanding of themselves that improved their home lives. On the negative side of the karmic ledger, the readings acknowledged the detrimental effects of fighting in wars and the fear associated with fierce combat which carried over into his 20th century incarnation. Interestingly, the soul that incarnated as Xenophon in ancient Greece had another historically significant past life as Oliver Cromwell, a social innovator in the extreme during the English Civil War of the 17th century. With regard to soul relationships, you will recall that Gertrude Casey had a past life as Normaline, the daughter of Socrates. Xenophon, a student of Socrates, would likely have known her or known of her. In fact, a reading states that after the death of Socrates, the mother of Normaline lived in the household of Xenophon, serving as seamstress for Xenophon's wife. During her trips to see her mother, Normaline came to know Xenophon and benefited materially from his generosity. Casey's readings go on to identify two members of Xenophon's immediate family, his wife and a sister. Continuing with the theme of intertwining past lives, Carrie Salter House, the sister of Hiram Salter, received a reading in 1925 that identified one of her past lives as the wife of Xenophon. So husband and wife in ancient Greece came back as brother and sister in the 20th century. During the Grecian lifetime, she had a positive influence on Xenophon, helping him bring the best to his people. Casey indicates that she was also a writer and that some of her work still remains buried in the Greek cities where she lived. In her present life, she carried over the ability to counsel and advise, to gain a hearing when others had failed. Like her brother Hiram, her life reading also identified an historically famous past life in Europe. She was told that she had lived as Marie Antoinette, queen and wife of Louis XVI in France. Not such a happy ending in that life. In 1926, a 46-year-old woman was told that she had lived as the sister of Xenophon. In the closely knit family structure of that time, she served as an assistant to Xenophon, while also developing her own mental abilities and acquiring a knowledge of music, art, and especially statuary. 
Casey concluded the description of her past life with the laudable phrase, the entity gave much. Although little is provided as to her past life in Greece, a reading for a 36-year-old woman mentioned an incarnation as Iodelioi, a servant in the household of Xenophon. During that experience, she gained in service to others, but lost as she rose in power within the household. She allowed selfishness to take control. Of historical note, her reading states that she lived when there were wars in the land, when Xenophon came as a guide to the peoples of that place. The description of Xenophon as a guide is echoed in a reading for an 18-year-old student who lived as Zincia in ancient Greece, during the period when the land was under the supervision rather than rule of Xenophon. Zincia made contributions in the field of art and rose to power. However, he lost as a soul when he succumbed to desires of the flesh and the usurping of control for his own selfish ends. As a soul entity, he carried over into his present life an intense sensitivity to criticism, so that anyone who made fun of him had better be ready to fight. Perhaps Zencia was a popular name in ancient Greece, for we find the same name used in a past life for a 43-year-old accountant, who was also informed of an incarnation during the time of Xenophon. As Xenophon withdrew from public life and the promotion of new ideals, this Zencia, like the previous one, rose to power and abused his position by coming self-centered. His reading stated that he excelled in physical beauty and prowess and would have been a wonderful director of a gymnasium. In many respects, his attitude reflected an appreciation of physical beauty and figure that was almost a form of worship, typical for many Grecians during that period. Several readings discussed individuals who were instrumental in Xenophon's military adventures. A 42-year-old engineer was told that he had served Xenophon as an engineer during his military campaigns. In the name Herodotoser, this individual devised means for making siege on city walls and creating waterways for tactical advantage. These abilities were carried over into his present life, but to be of optimal advantage, he needed to work on being less critical of others. A 37-year-old advertising salesman received a reading that described a past life as Xerxes, who was an aide to Xenophon during his military campaigns. Casey observed that some of the activities that appear as failures during that experience actually achieve more than is generally credited. From this, the soul entity became a reader of character, as one who could assess the mental and physical abilities of others and give direction as needed. A 41-year-old man was told that he had lived as Xerxel, the associate of Xenophon during the excursions into the eastern lands. Casey noted that these activities were not altogether successful and that if more credence had been given to the advice and counsel of Xerxel, the whole experience might have turned out much better for all concerned. The details of Xerxel's unheeded advice were not provided by Casey. The reading encouraged him to see in others what he would like to have within himself. A 35-year-old real estate salesman was told that he had served as a scribe to Xenophon and was regarded as an historian of that day. In the name Xenian, he lived during times of great change, a theme that runs through many of the readings given for individuals who had past lives in that time and place. Apparently, Xenian came to view the Grecian land as something of a nation, a tremendous shift in attitude from the warring city-states that has come to epitomize early Greece. He carried over into his present life a fascination of Greek peoples as individuals and as a nation. The theme of Greek nationalism is also found in a reading for a 48-year-old nurse who is said to have lived as Zerpia during the period when Xenophon was involved in military operations in Persia. In Greece, there were stirrings of nationalism, perhaps brought on as a unifying effect of a war abroad against the hated Persians. But there were also debates about the futility and injustice of military conquests. As a member of the upper class, Xerpia developed abilities as a leader who helped to bring harmony to the situation. Thus, in her present life, she found it easy to comfort and counsel those in need of direction. There were many other cases of individuals who were associated with Xenophon in ancient Greece. 
Throughout this group of readings, there is a sense of the greatness of a complex man who achieved much in times of great challenge and change, of expansion of Greek influence, setting the stage for the most formidable extension of Greek power in the history of the world, Alexander the Great.